We have missed you, Ed. Let's start off the interview by saying that, haven't we, Gaz? I mean, Most that's... definitely. You made, you made a wonderful appearance at Redcliffe School here and it made a lot of children very happy who are still talking about your visit to a local school. Do you get much opportunity to do that nowadays? Yeah, mostly to my own. I mean, like, not uh, not since the pandemic, but, like, before the pandemic, like, after my tour finished, like, I went into my school quite a bit. There's a primary school that my mum helps out at that I'm, you know, helping fund some music stuff there. And I run a, a music charity for kids in my home county that buys instruments and pays for music lessons. So there's a lot of, like, stuff I do with the local schools here. Um which is, which is, yeah, it's nice to kind of keep plugged into the local community. And your mum has been instrumental with a lot of things. When we did go to Redcliffe School, I'm not sure if you remember, Ed, it was the school that had to move after the earthquakes in Christchurch. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, I do remember. And they're still talking about it. We're pleased to inform you that just last year, we actually opened their brand new school, which was across the road from the existing school, and they sung a version of your song. Mm. Uh, and it was beautiful. And there were still some kids at that primary school, although they were seniors, who remember you coming and the town still talks about it to this day i mean that's i mean that's amazing that must be like six years ago right so they yeah. must have been like super <laughs> super young yeah that's so cool it, well um, well thank you thank you for keeping me relevant with the kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, look, you've helped us this this new song ed it's such a different sound for you what was it like walking away from like the guitar um, well, the guitar is still on there. It's just kind of like buried amongst throbbing <laughs> bass. But um, no, for me, I, you know, the, the album is very guitar led driven. It's very, very classic me sound, I guess. And um, I always try and do the first single as a little bit of a curveball. Like with Multiply, it was Sing. With Divide, it was Shape of You. And both of those songs just came out of nowhere. And I never thought that they were my sound. And I thought before releasing them that my fans would be like, what have you done? <laughs> um, which I think they're going to be like this time. And uh, I'm excited to put it out. What I like about it is pe people are like, it doesn't sound like you. Like, it sounds so different. And I feel like that's a good uh, place to start. You know, it's it, if you uh, give people the expected, it's like never exciting. You know? Can you tell me, because uh, we haven't heard the album, of course, your overall thoughts about where the album has gone and what it's doing? I think, you know, musically it's very similar to Ground that I've already covered, but I think, like, um, theme-wise, like, I feel like I've actually... But This sounds weird, but I feel like I've actually become an adult in the last um, sort of 18 months. I've had, like, a lot of life things that yeah. have happened that have sort of jolted me into being like, right, you're a responsible adult now. You know, like, I've, I've I turned 30... Uh, my wife and I had a daughter and I had a really close friend pass away and I'd never really experienced grief before. And that was the moment where I saw there was sort of a switch that flicked. And I was like, God, am I like, am I old now? Am I like having, you know, friends die? And is I'm this it? Yeah. And I'm married. And yeah. So I think the, the album is like, I guess, a, a weird coming of coming of age coming to terms album and i've it sounds odd saying that because i'm 30 and i feel like a coming of age album should be when you're like 21 but <laughs> i had so much of my 20s figuring myself out and falling in love and falling out of love and partying and traveling the world and stuff that i never really sat down and actually grew up you know how has being a dad changed your music ed has it had a huge effect on what you're putting out now yeah, I think it has. I mean, not necessarily. I haven't really written like fifteen baby songs. But I've been <laughs> yeah, like, people you know, do. I've, I've, but but you know, I, I've written. There's one lullaby on on the record, and I think like the song "Bad Habits," which is this single that came out, is like me reflecting on what I don't really do anymore. You know, yeah. I lived quite a. You know, I'm a I'm an acoustic soft boy singer songwriter, but I lived quite a like rock and roll existence on on tour. I feel, and uh, I kind of as soon as Cherry told me she was pregnant, that just kind of went out the window, and I suddenly was like, right, I have responsibilities. Actually, I lie. It wasn't as soon as she told me she was pregnant. It's when she got to a point where I might have to drive her to a hospital, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I need to calm down. <laughs> Now, can I ask you this? I don't know whether this is an urban myth or not, but somewhere along the line, someone said you'd either bought a pub or built a pub. Is so that a made-up story? No, no. I looked into buying a pub, and um, 
Look, so so two stories. I I do own a bar in London with my manager, but it's not really a pub. It's like a restaurant bar. Anyway, so I looked into buying a pub locally, and then, <laughs> then I went to the pub, and a bloke that used to bully me with drinks in there, and I was like, oh. Do I really want to? Do I really want to buy this place and like feel like <laughs> oh, no. awkward if I bump into this guy? <laughs> um, so so I was like, I'm gonna recreate the pub at my house. I have a barn that is dilapidated. That needs to be done up. So I built this pub. I put four beers on tap, and uh, yeah, like there's all the things that I think like a pub should have. Like I have like a freezer full glasses, so all it's always a frosted glass if if you're gonna have a beer kind of thing. And <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a pool table, there's TV to watch football, and it's also a place to put all my tat because I've got lots of tat. You know, like when you. <laughs> travel somewhere and someone gives you something random from some like a memento yeah like a plaque from somewhere or a signed football shirt from here or like i don't know and the house was kind of filling up with it and cherry was just like putting it all in the garage so now i have a place to put you got a man cave out there now that's good (laughs) yeah yeah for sure (laughs) one last question from me the the bully because you know we've all had bullies in our lives has he said another word to you has he ever acknowledged he bullied you or has he shown any respect we get on, man. We you really, do. we really get on. Like, yeah, man. He's like, you know, like, he had a tough upbringing, you know, and I, and that wasn't that wasn't realised at school. We we just sort of thought that he was mean, and like, I've, we we've all grown up now, and like, I can sit and have a pint with him. I just didn't necessarily want to like go there all the time, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Ed, you look fantastic. The music sounds great. Um, I'm hoping, you know, world opens up. We get another Ed Sheeran tour here in New Zealand. Like, that's what we're all hoping for. Thank you so much for finding time, for, you know, talking to us today. This Thank is like you. the world's well, biggest comeback from hiatus, you know. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I can get over there this year. There's, there's, I can see New Zealand in the diary to come on a promo trip, but it all depends on whether, like, your borders open, vaccinations, the world, blah, 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 blah. So fingers crossed I get to see you guys in person this year. But if not, thank you so much for making your time for me this morning.